Okay, today we're going to talk about a different, another way to find the greatest common factor. Uh, we've done listing it, circling the ones that are common, and then, of course, the greatest one being the greatest common factor. And then we've also did prime factorization, uh, where if we have any in common, uh, we multiply them together, and that's our greatest common factor. So now we're going to do what's called Euclid's algorithm. And it's pretty simple. Uh, it's actually something that you already know uh, how to do. It's just using it to find the greatest common factor. So what it is, you're going to do uh, two whole numbers, of course, and you're going to divide the larger of the two numbers by the smaller one. So whichever one's the biggest, that's the one that you're going to divide. Now, if there's a remainder, you're going to divide it into the divisor. Because, of course, the remainder uh, is going to be bigger. It's going to be the bigger number, so you're going to divide it. Now, you're going to continue doing that until you get a remainder of zero. Now, the final divisor is the greatest common factor. So whatever that last divisor was is your greatest common factor. So let's take a look at it. Here we have 384, uh, 383 divided by, oh, I'm the square root symbol, sorry, D divided by four. Well, I know that four will go into 38 nine times. That'd be 36. When we subtract that, we get 23. Now four will go into 23 five times. We get a remainder of three here. Now, here's the thing though. What do we do with that remainder? Well, we're going to say three divided by four. So we took that remainder and we divide it into the divisor. Okay. So let's do this again. Here we have 432 divided by 12. Well, that's going to be 3. It's going to be 36. And when we borrow, that becomes 72. So that'll be 6 times 12 is 72. We're good. Nothing's left there. We're good. So the greatest common factor of those two numbers is 12. Okay. Now here, three didn't work because we didn't end up with a zero remainder. So GCF is not four here, but since we get zeros here, the greatest common factor would be 12 there. Okay. Now, let's look at 403 and divided by 13. That's going to be three times. That'll be 39. Okay, since it comes out evenly again, 13 is going to be the greatest common factor because we know that 13 is a factor of 403. Well, 13's greatest factor is going to be 13. There's no way that it 13 can have a greater factor than itself. So that will be the greatest common factor there. Now, how do we find the greatest common factor with big numbers here? Well, this is the concept. Okay, remember, I'm always trying to get y'all to understand uh, what the concept is here. So, if we're looking at this, we have 100 units and 60 units. So, what can we do? What can we break 100 units into that we can also break? 60 units down into. Well, here we see we can break down 100 units into 20 units each, and we can break down 60s into 20 units each. And we would get 5 units of 20 for 100, and we would get 3 units of 20 for 60. Okay, so 
if you break that down, you would have 20 being the greatest units or the greatest common factor. So if you look at this, let's take 100. Okay. And if you were to divide by 60, okay, you would get 1, and that would give you 40. Well, all we're going to do again is we're going to take that number. Okay, let's see if we can take 40 and divide it by 20. And we would get 2. Okay. So if we do that, we can see that there's no remainder, which tells us that we would have a, because this is our remainder, we're left with this 40 here, right? When we divide 100 by 60, we're left with this 40. Well, if we divide it by 20, our 20 units, we end up with it being the greatest common factor. Okay. Now, let's look at um, the next page. Sorry, I don't know how I erase that. All right. So it says, let's apply Euclid's algorithm to some of the problems from our last lesson. So you've already seen these. But let's do it. All that says is, since this is the biggest number, we're going to divide it. Let's divide by 30. Well, that's going to go one time. It's going to leave it with 20. So now I take that and I move it to divide it by... Oh, nope, that is not correct. This becomes our divisor. This becomes our what we're dividing because that's the bigger number. This will, since you're going to have a remainder, what your divisor is will become your, what you are dividing because it's going to be the bigger number. So let's do it again. That'll be one, which makes that a 20. So same thing. Let's move this. Since it's the smallest number, we're dividing by that and we're dividing 20 by that. So then we get two which makes us have a remainder of zero. Therefore, whatever we divide by, the divisor is our GCF. Okay, our GCF is 10. Okay. So, let's go ahead and move on to B here, we can do the same thing. Since 45 is our biggest number, we're going to divide by divide it by 30. Well, that's only going to go one time. And that gives us 15. That comes to the outside because 30 is going to be bigger. Well, that's going to be 2. And now we have zeros. So this is our GCF. It's whatever the last divisor is that gives you a result of zero remainder. That's Euclid's. I like this one. This one's a little bit quicker for me. I like doing Euclid's instead of listing all those like we did earlier. So let's do this again. How does it work with these big old numbers? 144. Well, 144 will only go once. And just think about all these factors that you're going to have to list out for these big numbers. 4, so that's going to be 48. And so then you're going to do 48 divided by 96. So that's going to go 2 times. And that's evenly. So this is your GCF. How much quicker is that than listing out all those factors or doing the prime factorization? So much quicker. Let's do this one again. Okay. Well, that's all I'm going to go once. And that's going to be 80. 180. Okay. So now we're going to take 660 and divide it by 180. And that will go, what, probably um, three times? And five of 40. Okay, so that leaves you with 120. 
So we gotta do it one more time, at least. Or we'll have to do it a couple more times, maybe. So that's gonna be one, that's gonna be 120. That's gonna leave you with 60. So 60 divided by 120 is two. So now, since we have zeros, 60 is our G C F. So hopefully you can see that Euclid's number, or I'm sorry, Euclid's algorithm is much faster than um, listing out all the factors or doing the prime factorization. Okay. Now, page five says the greatest common factor has many uses. Among them, the GCF lets us find out the maximum size of squares that cover a rectangle. When we solve problems like this, we cannot have any gaps or any overlapping squares. Of course, the maximum size squares will be the minimum number of squares needed. A rectangular computer table measures 30 inches by 50 inches. We need to cover it with square tiles. What is the side length of the largest square tile we can use to completely cover the tile without overlap or gaps? Okay, so we would break that down. To, we would know this is 50 and this is 30. Okay, now I'm not going to make 50 little lines down through there and show you each inch or 30 lines going horizontal to show you those inches. I'm not going to do this 50 times and do all this, right? I don't want to do that. So I can know that if I divide this by five, I can divide this by three because each one of these squares would represent 10 inches squared. Okay, that'd be a 10 inch by 10 inch square. Okay, so if we used squares that are 10 by 10, how many do we need? Well, we would have five going across times three going down. Well, that's going to equal 15. So we need 15 square tiles. Okay. Now, if this were a giant chunk of cheese in a factory, would it change the thinking or the calculations we just did? Well, no, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't have anything to do with it. How many 10 inch by 10 inch squares of cheese could, we, could be cut from a giant block of 30 inch by 30 inch. Well, the most we could do would be 15. Now, the only difference here is if it's a block of cheese, it's actually a three dimensional object. So you're gonna have like a 30 inch by 50 inch slab that's also an inch thick or, but you're still only gonna have 15 cubes or 15 squares cut. Okay, and I think that's it for the lesson. So the only thing I want to do is to go back to the first page and look at the instructions for Euclid's. This is what you need to write down and this is what you need to follow, these four steps. And basically all that says is you take the bigger number and divide it by the smaller number. Then that remainder has got to be bigger or it's, I'm sorry, it's got to be smaller than your divisor, right? So you move your divisor, I'm going to call it the divisor, and then we'll call this the big number. So once you do this and you get a remainder, this remainder has to be smaller than the divisor, right? We're moving it out here, the remainder, and we're taking this divisor since it's going to be the bigger number and putting it in there. And then you're going to do that, and you're going to get the remainder again. And you're going to move that to the outside. And whatever you're dividing by here, you're going to move that, this 
becomes the new divisor, so we'll call it divisor one, and we'll move it to the inside. And then you just keep working it out just like we've done, okay, until you get zeros. And then whatever that divisor is, if it's divisor number four, well, that's going to be your greatest common factor, okay, when you get zeros. Just remember, divide by the biggest, or divide the biggest number. So you're going to put the biggest number inside the division symbol, inside the house, or whatever you want to call it.